All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2022 DoorDash cheat codes. We got some awesome tips for you guys. We're gonna help you guys make some more money. If you are a DoorDash driver, even if you're an Uber Eats driver or a Grubhub driver, these tips are for you and they're gonna help you make a lot more money especially in the year 2022. I've been doing DoorDash for about four years now, Postmates for a little bit before that. This is the fourth or fifth year, I think fifth year that we've been doing these cheat codes videos on how to make more money. So we got some pretty advanced cheat codes for you guys. But first, if you guys enjoy these videos at all, or if you find any value in this video, please consider smashing the like button for me, subscribe, and also share the video if you really like these videos. Anyways, let's get into the cheat codes for 2022. Number one, the first one that I think is probably the most important. If you are trying to make a decent amount of money as a DoorDash driver, Uber Eats, Grubhub, any of that, times that you are dashing is probably the most important. It is very crucial that you are dashing at the correct times. Now, what I would consider to be the best times is lunch and dinner when everyone is ordering food. If people aren't ordering food, like if you're dashing at the middle of the night, you're probably getting like drunk people who probably aren't gonna tip you well. You're probably gonna run into issues. So you probably wanna avoid those times. What you wanna do is dash from probably the hours of 11 to two, which is the typical lunch time. And also from the hours of, I would say five to eight or maybe nine for dinner time. That's when most of the people are ordering their food. And if you wanna be making some decent money, you probably gotta be driving during the times that people are ordering their food. Now, a lot of people are able to uh, schedule their times ahead. If you are, if you're an avid DoorDasher, DoorDasher will let you schedule your uh, shifts about a week ahead. I don't think that that's completely necessary. It's usually not too hard to lock in a DoorDash whenever you want. Usually you just have to wait like five minutes at most nowadays, but times you are dashing is very crucial. Tip number two, the area that you are dashing in. If you are dashing in an area, like for example, I live in a really rural area. I'm not gonna make very much money because there's no restaurants near me in my area. What I need to do is go drive over to maybe like an outlet mall, or a shopping center or something where there's a bunch of different restaurants all in one area because the more restaurants that are around you, the more likely you are to get an order. Whoever is basically the closest to the restaurant is going to get that order that pops up. So you wanna place yourself kind of in the center of a bunch of different restaurants. That's gonna give you more options and maybe you wanna choose probably your favorite restaurants. Like for me, my exam or my favorite restaurant to deliver from is probably Chipotle. It's very simple. You walk in, the orders are always almost on the shelf. You just grab it and you go. Chipotle is probably my favorite one, but there's a few other ones, especially like the higher end restaurants that are great for dashing. So you will learn that over time, dashing which ones are your favorite restaurants. Tip number three, I think this one is probably the most important. It's something that I do all the time and I'm currently doing it as we speak right now. It's what I call casual dashing. What casual dashing is, is when you dash along the way of your route that you are already gonna take for that day. So I personally own a footwear company and I go to the gym every day. Right now, we got a bunch of shoe orders that I need to take to UPS. So what I'm doing right now, I'm sitting at my house waiting for an order to come in that takes me in the direction of the UPS store. That way, if I get an order that is on the way there, I don't have to spend any dead miles. And dead miles are when you're just driving out of your way to go pick up a restaurant or you're driving way back to the area or something, putting on miles that you did not need to put onto your car. I personally try to drive to the UPS store every single day, get an order on the way there, then get an order on the way to the gym, and then an order on the way home. And by then, I've already made 20 to 30 bucks just doing the normal route that I was already going to do. So implementing casual dashing in your daily routine is something that I would highly suggest to people. Personally, I used to try to make $70 a day. That was always my goal, was just to make $70 a day. And if you can make $30, just doing your normal errands that you were already going to do, you're gonna be a lot more ahead than if you were to just go out and DoorDash all day long with no strategy. Tip number four is selecting your orders. You wanna be very selective on the orders. You do not want to be a top dasher. In my opinion, you do not wanna be a top dasher and you do not wanna take every single order that comes up because you're gonna be doing orders for $3, for $4, you're gonna be driving a lot, you're gonna be wasting a lot of time. And what you really wanna do is be selective. Try to get an order, in my opinion, no less than a dollar per mile. That means if there's an order 
that is a seven dollar delivery you want it to be less than seven miles also you really got to consider if you're taking an order that goes way out of the way away from any restaurants maybe it's in like a rural area you are going to have to drive back to the restaurants to get another order so you got to consider those dead miles that you're driving back so what you really want to do is probably I would try to stay above two dollars a mile that gives you a pretty nice cushion for your gas money that you're going to have to spend I always like to use this analogy door dashing is like running up an escalator going the opposite direction so if you're running up you're making money the escalator is actually going the opposite direction because you got to include taxes that you got to spend your gas money wear and tear on your car all these things really add up and you're not going to realize it until you have to buy new tires or something and especially in this year every with inflation everything is going up in cost it's going to cost you a lot more to be a delivery driver and unfortunately with inflation going up doordash has not increased our rates they've actually decreased our rates it used to be four dollars a mile or four dollars in order minimum now it's down to two dollars so unfortunately doordash is not increasing our pay they're actually decreasing it because of the demand and there's so many people that want to be delivery drivers so you got to be really you got to really strategize in order to make decent money especially nowadays as a doordash driver so when you're selecting your orders you probably want to try to select orders that stay in the area like the general vicinity of where there is restaurants if you go too far away from that area you got to drive all the way back so you don't want to be accepting orders that just go it maybe it's seven miles one way but you got to consider you're gonna have to drive seven miles back now that is really going to add up over time tip number five I would say is very very important do not drive fast save your gas trust me that extra minute that you make in driving really fast is not worth one the speeding ticket the speeding ticket is gonna increase your prices on your insurance that you got to pay it's probably around two to four hundred dollars depending on what state you live in that's like half a week of door dashing just gone throughout the drain and on top of that you're going to spend more money on gas unless you're driving a Tesla you're probably gonna be spending more money on gas and that's not worth making that extra minute so I would highly suggest driving like you are taking your freaking DMV test if you are driving super fast it is going to bite you back in the butt trust me it is not worth it I've gotten a speeding ticket one time doing DoorDash totally not worth it tip number six tip number six is something that I think is very important but it's not necessary but it can save you a few minutes of your day so when you are looking at an order and maybe it's like a, a dollar a mile and it's like maybe I'll accept this order or maybe I won't I'm not sure what you can do is zoom in on the map and as you zoom in you can probably tell whether you're delivering to an apartment complex or you're delivering to a house houses are always a lot easier because you just drive up you get out of your car drop it off at the door and you walk back you don't have to go around looking for the apartment number sometimes apartments can be really complex and trying to find uh, the apartment number sometimes it's dark it's really hard to see the apartment numbers the map doesn't take you exactly to where their apartment actually is sometimes the gate is messed up or the gate code is incorrect or something apartment complex just add a little curveball to your delivering and I highly I try to at least avoid apartment complexes but what I really try to avoid is hotels and since I'm in Las Vegas casinos if you deliver to the strip you are screwed it is going to take so much extra time just to get out of your car walk through the casino deliver to someone's hotel room it is so not worth it so I try to avoid hotels and casinos at all costs that's something you're going to have to just get to know your area like if you generally in Las Vegas if you're delivering to a busy street it generally means that you're delivering to an apartment if you're delivering to the suburbs you're probably delivering to a house so just getting to know your area and trying to avoid apartment complexes can be a nice little tip that you can add on to your delivering tip number seven this one is crucial delivering on multiple apps at the same time now I know DoorDash is probably gonna hate me for saying this but you do not want to be just relying on one app because one they can deactivate you at any time and I've seen some pretty funky deactivations that were probably not justified 
but what you really want to do is be delivering on multiple platforms that way you're getting multiple offers from each platform maybe you're doing DoorDash and Postmates or DoorDash and Uber Eats and DoorDash and Uber Eats and Grubhub and Postmates all at the same time because the more options that you have for getting offers the better the better delivering is going to be all together not only that but sometimes you get deliveries that go two two orders from the same exact restaurant on different apps and they go in the same area it happens a lot more often than you think if you're a brand new door dasher i would probably suggest staying away from this tip but it's something that i've implemented over the years and getting multiple options is always better like you do not want to rely on one stream of income that is probably i i'm gonna nail that one in the coffin like do not rely on one stream of income especially if you are solely door dashing get onto another platform it only takes a few minutes to apply maybe you get onto uh instacart or any of the other apps anything just do not rely on one source of income trust me tip number eight tip number eight is just being generous and uh being transparent with a customer if an order takes a long time then you want to let them know, hey, this order's taking a lot longer than I thought it would. Sorry about that. It's kind of out of my control or something along those lines. Because just letting them know can save you a bad rating. You do not want to get a bad rating. It can make you more money on the tip. Generally, the tips are uh, put in before the order is even submitted, but they can upgrade your tip later. And just having good ratings, being transparent with the customers is going to help you a lot and it can make you extra money. For example, if you're transparent with a customer and you let them know, hey, I had to wait an extra 30 minutes, I'm sorry about this, the restaurant is really backed up right now, they might add on like an extra five or $10 tip just because it's taking more of your time. Not saying that's gonna happen very often, but it does happen. And also on top of that, you wanna dress appropriately. You don't wanna dress like, really trashy or anything you want to be presentable that way if you are actually delivering to someone in person and they didn't select the uh, drop off at door option and you they selected the hand to customer you do have that five seconds to make a good impression and possibly get a cash tip it doesn't happen as often as it used to but it does still happen and the final tip the one that i talk about most of all on my youtube channel is having different side hustles not only do you want to have multiple apps if you're going to be a delivery driver, you want to be doing multiple things at once. Like right now, I am talking to you guys on my YouTube channel where I make passive income. I also have a footwear company that is also sort of a form of passive income. I do many different things at once. So if you guys are only delivery driving, maybe you're new to being an independent contractor, the more things you can add onto your list of things to do while you're door dashing, like... You, maybe you run some kind of app or maybe you're doing social media for a company or maybe you're a photographer. Adding things that you can do while door dashing is going to add so much value to your life because DoorDash is very lucrative. There's so much time that you're just sitting around waiting for orders to come in or waiting for the order to be done. If you can do something during that time and make your time more valuable, it's gonna benefit you like infinitely i swear you will make so much money so much more money over time if you have multiple streams of income coming in and generally you want the streams of income to not all be like door dashing maybe there's a career that you're working towards or anything like that i personally have listened to hundreds of audiobooks while i'm driving around and i would suggest my three top books that i think any independent contractor should read is the four hour work week rich dad poor dad and your next five moves those books are very 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 influential and they can really change your life and they've definitely changed my life so i would highly suggest that to anyone anyways that's all the tips i got for you guys today if i missed any tips comment them down below and let me know what tips that i missed and we will include them into the next video i sincerely Thank all of you guys for watching my channel. If you Again, if you guys haven't yet, please consider subscribing and also smash the like button. If you haven't yet, go to offaxisathletics.com. That is my footwear company. We make awesome shoes. We got all kinds of different models. We got, we got these black ones. We got all kinds of stuff. Go to the website. We got about four different models coming out right now. And use my discount code offaxistanner for 30% off. 
We will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Drive safe. Make that money. Peace, guys.